so it's it's interesting because usually we get the teaching from the teacher. Usually they are one and the same. But if we had to pull it apart, because of course sometimes, sometimes maybe we get a teaching, but there wasn't a teacher. Sometimes maybe we have a teacher who doesn't seem to be giving teachings. So they both have their own power. Obviously together when you have a teacher giving teachings, but even separately. So for example, the power of the teacher, when that teacher is really a guru, in the West, sadly, there's kind of a misunderstanding. And the word guru frequently gets mistranslated as teacher. Well, a guru is much more than a teacher. The word guru literally means the one who removes darkness and brings light. An easy way to think about it is if you were studying oceanography, let's say, in school, you could have the best oceanography teacher. You could spend three hours in a lecture hall. You could learn everything there is to know about the ocean, how deep it is, how wide it is, how far it is from coast to coast what it is that lives there. But at the end of class, you would still be dry. Whereas if you had an oceanography guru rather than teacher, at the end of the class, you would still know the depths of the ocean, what lives in the ocean, the details of the ocean. But at the end of that class, your clothes would be soaking wet. The guru gives not just a teaching, but actually an experience. So when we talk about the, the teacher, it's a teacher who's a guru, who's giving an experience. Now, sometimes the guru gives an okay, sit down, I'm going to give you a teaching. Here's a pravachan. Here's satsang. Here's a meditation instruction. And then we have gurus like Raman Maharishi who just were there. Their, their simple presence was the teaching. Every once in a while, a word or two. And there's no one, I was not blessed enough to have his darshan in form, but I know a lot of people who were disciples of his. And no one has ever said, God, I wish he gave more teachings. Everyone understood and felt his presence is the teaching. Just that energetic transmission is the teaching. So if you have a guru, a powerful teacher who isn't giving any teachings, or maybe the teachings seem not so damwale or not in a language you understand, don't worry. What it means is that this guru is one who is teaching through energy, teaching through presence. There's a beautiful, a beautiful story about Bhagwan Bodh, who was in a village. Everybody was very excited to have his darshan, to hear his teachings. The whole village gathered together. He came, he sat, and he sat. And he sat and everybody, the beginning they thought cello, beyond cardina, they all closed their eyes. Slowly they thought, what is going on? One by one they started opening their eyes and looking at him. He was just sitting. 
It wasn't even like his eyes were closed in meditation. Just sitting. People kept waiting and waiting and waiting. When is he going to speak? And he just kept sitting. And finally, after a few hours of just sitting, he stood, blessed them, and left. Some of his disciples went to him afterwards and said, what happened? You were, you were there to give a teaching. Everybody was waiting for a teaching. And he said, that was a group of people who don't even understand my silence. If they don't understand my silence, how are they going to understand my words? First, let them understand my silence. And only then do we move into words. I know Pooja Swamiji speaks about his guru, who also never sat him down and gave him teachings like this. He just walked with him, blessed him, gave him mantra, gave him experiences, slapped him a whole bunch, literally. Gave him teachings in life, never a formal teaching, but that power of a transmission. So if you've got a teacher who is a powerful transmitter, that is the teaching. And then, of course, there are teachers sometimes where the teaching is beautiful. The teaching is perfect. But then we hear stories. Maybe that teacher isn't so perfect. Scandals come. Issues arise. People say, oh, I don't know. Mene yehi suna, wo suna. But what about the teachings? The teachings were so beautiful. We hear this so frequently. There's this scandal or that scandal. The divine is very compassionate and very frequently sends perfect teachings through very imperfect teachers. And that's also fine. A lot of people have come who have had scandals around their particular teacher, whether he or she was actually a, a guru or just a yoga teacher or a meditation teacher. And they'll come and they'll say, but I don't know what to do. The teachings were so great. The teachings were so beautiful. They impacted me. They touched me. They changed me. They showed me some light where there was darkness. But that teacher, I heard this or I heard that. Does that mean that I need to throw away the teachings? And of course, the answer is no. Just because a teacher is unable to live by or embody his or her own teachings doesn't mean that they are less perfect or less true or less beneficial for you. So if you've had a, a beautiful experience with teachings that are touching and transformative to you, don't worry. If the teacher is also touching and transformative and powerful, wonderful. Consider yourself doubly blessed. But if not, don't worry. Take the teachings, live the teachings. That's what you were meant to get. The teacher was just a, a channel for you to get those teachings.